sum of the rate. Let me quickly move on to another tool and then we'll come back and answer a bunch of questions in terms of does this make any sense, right? Meaning how, does it, how do we pick and choose the best forecasting tool? The third tool, it's a rather popular tool called as exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing method. I'm going to give you a formula. It's just a formula. You can always program it in your Excel. The formula is FT, FT stands for forecast in time period T equals your forecast from the previous period, which is FT minus 1, plus a certain quantity I'll describe in a second, times your actual value in the previous period minus your forecast value in the previous period. So Arun, if this all sounds uh, Greek to you guys. So could you please repeat? It is. So? Because I'm using alpha. That's supposed to be a joke. Anyway. So this alpha so could you is what I call as an exponential smoothing constant. Exponential smoothing constant. My FT is what I forecast in time period T and FT minus 1 is of course my forecast in the previous period and my AT minus 1 is my actual demand in the previous period. So please note that your alpha is always, always between 0 and 1. Your smoothing constant, so in some sense, this method is very similar to your weighted moving average method. Here, the weight is just alpha out here. It's the weight times the error. Let's go back to the same data. The same data we used. Same six month data. So Jan, Feb, March, April, May and June. The data is 12, 11, 15, 12, 16, 15. For the time being, our, the textbook says use alpha is equal to 0.2. Why 0.2? I'll explain this soon. I'll tell you how to find the alpha value. For now, I'm going to use alpha is equal to 0.2. And if you notice my formula, my formula always needs the previous forecast, Ft minus 1, which means for me to find forecast for time t, I always need the previous time periods forecast. In this case, I'm going to go to January and the, text, the textbook it says use a starting value of 13. Now, let's not make any assumption in the classroom. I know, but I'm going to replace June with Jan because I'm going to apply this technique across the entire data set, right? Same thing we did for the previous two met methods. So I'm just going to replace June with Jan. Now, why do I need Jan? Going back to your question, Saranya. I'm going to forecast for February using the forecast from January. The drawback even though the exponential smoothing method is a very, very popular method among companies, one drawback with this method is that 
you always need a starting point. If that Ft minus 1 is not given to us, we are in trouble, so to speak. So, in the real world, of course, in this problem it says 13, but in the real world, if that starting forecast is not given to you, there are two ways to approach it. So, I am going to give you these two ways based on solid empirical evidence. There are two ways. So, if the 13 was not given to us, there are two ways to approach. Number one, how many of our data points we have, right? We will take a simple average of those data points and use that average as a starting point. I repeat, if that starting value is not given to us, approach number one, we take a simple average of our data set and use that average as a starting point. Approach number two says, your starting forecast can take on the same value as your very first period for an uh, actual number. So, if the 13 was not given to us, it's okay to either use 12 or take a simple average of the data set and use that average as a starting point. So, in our case, it so happens that we are given 13. So, now the question is, how do I apply this method? So, what do I do now? I have to find forecast in February. So, forecast in February equals forecast in January plus alpha is 0.2 times, oops, times 0.2 times my actual value in January minus forecast in January. That's the formula. So, in our case, the forecast in January is 13 plus 0.2 times 12 minus 13. So, 12 minus 13 is minus 1, 13 minus 0.2 is 12.8. Let's do forecast in March. So, forecast in March equals Forecast in February, which is 12.8, plus 0.2 times 11 minus 12.8. So, 11 minus 12.8 is minus 1.8, minus 1.8 times 0.2 would give me minus 0.36. So, this is nothing but 12.44. Of course, the people using Excel, because you have to cut and paste the formula, you have no clue in terms of how it all mapped out. But it's okay. That's fine. You make the cost. April. Forecast in April equals 12.44 plus 0.2 times 15 minus 12.44. 15 minus 12.44 is what? 2.56. So 2.56 times 0.2 is 0.512. So 12.44 plus 0.512 will be 12.952. Any point? You have any questions? Stop me. Stop me. Forecast in May equals 12.952 plus 0.2 times 12 minus 12.952. Okay, 12 minus 12.952 is minus 0.952. So, minus 0.952 times 0.2 is going to be minus 0.1904. So, you subtract 12.9520 and 0 0.1904, what do you get people? You get 
12.7616. So what's forecast in June? I'm sure you guys have it. What's the forecast in June? 13.41. And finally, forecast in July is 7. Again, it's a process. Okay? And you go through a certain procedure. And what this procedure does, the reason why this method, exponential smoothing, is a very popular method, is it's easy to implement. In a spreadsheet, in a matter of a few seconds, I can populate the entire spreadsheet. But the drawback again is, I can only forecast for the next period. Note that I've still not explained to you guys how do I pick the alpha value. We just use alpha is equal to 0.2. Note that we just use a rate of 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. I still haven't explained why 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Note that we use a three month moving average. I still haven't explained to you why a three month moving average. Why not two months? Why not four months? Like what I asked your colleagues over here in the classroom. How do we know? How do we know? So now, let me explain how do you pick and choose the best forecasting tool. Now, I want to be careful out here. I want you to be careful. There is seldom a superior forecasting tool, what I told you. But what I want to convey to you is for a given case, for a given situation, for a given project, for a given data set, it's possible to pick and choose the best forecasting tool. And I asked you a question, what do I mean the best? And people said, well, when I say the best forecasting tool, whatever is going to give me a value that is as close as possible to what actually happens in the real world. Very simple. At the end of the day, the reason why they're going through all this nonsense is to ensure that whatever we are predicting is going to take us as close as possible to whatever is going to happen in the real world even though you and I have no clue at this point I say no clue I mean I mean I'm not I'm just using the word no clue of course you have a clue because you have experience you have history okay of doing this so when I say no clue what I mean is we do not know today exactly what that data is going to be. But based on years of experience, you still use your gut feeling. Okay? You still use the fact you spent many, many years. So there is definitely some level of subjectivity involved. But the more objective we are, the better our decision is going to be. 